Tell me what happened to your well, dad. We were, we were a small but very close family. I mean, there was only eight of us. Uh, and eight. Um, eight of us, yeah. There was me, my older brother, my mum and dad, and three grandparents and an uncle. That was the entire pretty much extended family, all living next to each other as you did back then, within about a mile of each other. And, um, yeah, uh, Wednesday nights were lads' night in our house because mum went to the bingo and dad and the two boys played six foot, this, on the six-foot snooker table. And the only reason we did that on a Wednesday when mum was at bingo is because we got blue chalk all over the walls because the room wasn't big enough to play the snooker properly. And one Wednesday evening, dad hadn't been feeling too well. He'd been a bit poorly. Um, and, it's, you know, it's a funny story when you tell it, but actually the consequences are pretty huge. But we well, were playing snooker and he was in his pyjamas and his pyjama bottoms fell down. And I was only nine, so I started laughing. My brother was a little bit embarrassed and a bit concerned, but, you know, just thought it was he was messing around. And then never missed a ball for about 10 minutes, just potted everything. And we were going, this is a bit strange. 10 minutes later, he's on the floor. So had had a cerebral hemorrhage. Had thought it was the flu for the weeks before. Um, of course, my brother phoned the bingo. My mum came rushing home. Uh, and our only concern as young lads was to get this snooker table away because mum would have been furious that we were playing snooker in the, in the lounge. So we, we managed to get it back into the cupboard. Um, I mean, and he just lay there sort of motionless. And we got, uh, eventually the ambulance came. We were packed off into the room. Uh, and the, the three things I remember about it were, that firstly, um, I peeked out the room as, as the ambulance were taking him away and he was sick everywhere, which seemingly happens when you've had some kind of trauma, your body empties out. Gosh. We thought, oh, he's maybe just a bit ill. And then four o'clock in the morning or so, we shared a room. Mum came back and said, look, Dad's not coming home. And then my, I sort of went back to sleep, didn't really know what was going on. And about seven o'clock in the following morning, woke up, went into the lounge and the whole family were sitting there. Um, and that's when it really sunk in because it was a sort of, pink NHS bag with all his stuff in it, including his pyjamas that kept falling down and his glasses on the top. And that really sort of defined the family. He, uh, the lesson in there is he had been ill for some time but didn't tell anyone and should have really got some advice. Whether or not in the mid-80s, he was only 39, he would have been able to get the medical attention required to sort something like that, I don't know, because obviously it's moved on quite a bit. But, you know, he was having blackouts at work and wasn't telling anyone. He was... You know, feeling a bit depressed, which is all the great symptoms of having something wrong with your brain. And, you know, at 39, that was him. Now, I'm six years older than that now, so I reflect on it a lot. Um, and being a father now as well, I reflect on it a lot. But, yeah, I mean, utterly traumatic. And my poor mum had to deal with the consequences of it, really. How does a nine-year-old make sense of... of, of, of